Test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Chelsea Luciani. I'm a senior manager in the Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch in the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Development and Competitiveness. I'm here with my colleague, Ben Kalisnik, a fellow senior manager who will be delivering today's presentation. Ben is our South Korea expert in the office, having lived in South Korea for five years. We are really pleased you could join us today and hear about the opportunities in the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement for BC business, sorry, for businesses in Canada. More, specific, more generally, the BC government has been working to raise awareness of the opportunities in Canada's free trade agreements for businesses, workers, and communities, and we have been traveling around the province for the last year to do so. We have held dedicated sessions for women-owned businesses, today's included, and Indigenous business as well. If you're interested in attending a future session, please send us an email afterwards and the community that you live in, and we will let you know when we next come to your community or next have a webinar. So before I hand off things to Ben, I'd like to go over a few uh, webinar technical details. So I've got on the screen a bit about what the control panel looks like. So there's an audio pane with a questions pane, and you should see today's presentation available in the handouts panel. On the side, the orange arrow lets you shrink the panel to the side of the screen. It automatically shrinks it if you don't do anything for a while. Under audio, you have two options, via your computer or voice over IP, or by phoning in. If you click on phone call, it will give you a phone number to call with an access code for this webinar and a personal identification number for you individually. You should also see a drop-down menu where you will find today's presentation. Questions are encouraged at any time, but as you are muted, please put them in the questions pane whenever you think of them, and you may need to click on the drop-down arrow to open the pane. I will ask your questions to Ben, and if we don't get all your questions, I will try and get you an answer via an email after the webinar has finished. All right, so I'm gonna hand off things to Ben Kolesnik. Great, thank you, Chelsea. Uh, hi, everyone. As uh, Chelsea said, my name is Ben Kaluzic, and I'm uh, also with the Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch with the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Development, and Competitiveness. Uh, the branch that we work for represents British Columbia's interests in free trade agreements, uh, also trade disputes that impact British Columbia, uh, and uh, also uh, what we're doing right now, which is um, free trade agreement outreach and promotion. So thank you for connecting today. Uh, to learn about the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement uh, and how that can benefit your business. Um, the idea for this session first came about uh, when we learned about the uh, Asia-Pacific Foundation of Canada's women-only business mission to South Korea. And so uh, once we started to develop a CKFTA uh, pre-brief for that uh, mission, it's the idea sort of um, blossomed and we wanted to extend the invitation to as many women-owned businesses in British Columbia that were interested in the Korean market and the CKFTA as possible. Um, my focus, of course, is British Columbia, being from the BC ministry, but uh, I know that there may be others from outside of British Columbia on the call today. Um, so please excuse some of the language that uh, I tend to use is BC specific and maybe even some of the examples, but uh, please know that um, all of the provisions and um, benefits that are in the CKFTA are equally applicable to to you, whether you're located in BC or, or, or otherwise. Um, I, uh, as Chelsea said, I lived in Korea for five years, and so um, I, I have some knowledge of the, of, of the country and, and should be, you know, hopefully can answer some questions that you might have, um, even outside of the CKFTA. Um, but we'll see, we'll see um, what you might have uh, for me. So, uh, so this is just an uh, overview of what uh, I hope to go over today. Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about our ministry uh, and what uh, free trade agreements do, uh, and then jump into Canada's free trade agreements before talking uh, in more detail about the CKFTA. Uh, and then I'll finish off by going over a few resources before turning it over to uh, AWZ with the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. Uh, to talk about uh, the foundation and the great work that they're doing uh, when it comes to trade missions. Some of this uh, material you may already know. Um, some of it, on the other hand, is um, can be quite dense and, and technical. So I hope that um, uh, if you just take one thing away, you know that um, we are here to answer questions. I can answer, you can answer questions today, uh, and um, I'll have my contact information up at the end. Uh, you can 
always feel free to reach out to, to us at our branch. And um, if we can't get you the answers you need on a, a trade agreement or a trade barrier, um, then we certainly will know who to put you in contact with. So uh, the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Development and Competitiveness, um, uh, the, the aim is really to make life more affordable for uh, all British Columbians by building a strong, sustainable economy that works for everyone. Uh, there are many ways to foster this economic growth. Uh, one way is to encourage businesses to leverage some of the opportunities in free trade agreements. Uh, goods and services can become more competitive. Uh, we can revitalize traditional industries, we can uh, foster new ones and uh, foster trade diversification as well and, and create jobs. Um, one of the problems with this, of course, is that uh, free trade agreements are uh, long and they're complex and they're technical. And it's unreasonable to expect that most small and medium-sized enterprises have the time or the resources to be pouring through these long and technical agreements. Uh, big businesses might have those resources, but um, you know, small businesses are busy. They're creating jobs and they're, and they're running their businesses. Um, and so through our FTA outreach uh, program, what we're really trying to do is try to raise awareness of some of these opportunities and to provide some practical tools to businesses so that it makes it easier to navigate some of these agreements. Um, now, before we move on, I'm just going to pull up a, um, a poll question for everyone. So you uh, can vote um, once the uh, option comes up for you to do so. So the, yeah, so the question is, uh, which of these countries does Canada not have an FTA with? So United States, Peru, Vietnam, China, and Ukraine. We'll just give you a couple of minutes to, uh, or a few seconds to, to register your vote. And I forgot to mention, no cheating by uh, Googling the answer. Okay, well, I think, I think we'll, we'll close it off and see uh, how, you, how everyone did. Okay, interesting. Okay, so um, the majority uh, thought that uh, the correct answer was Ukraine, and uh, second uh, place came in at uh, China. And uh, yeah, the correct answer is China. We, we, Canada has engaged um, in some exploratory discussions on trade with China, but China is the only one in that list that, that we don't have a free trade agreement with. And um, you know, I know that uh, the focus for today is the CKFTA, but uh, if anyone has questions about any other agreements as well, I'm happy to go over that. Okay, so let's jump into uh, just some basics on what free trade agreements do. Many of you probably already know some of this, but um, really the, the, the World Trade Organization is um, sort of the foundation of global trade. And uh, of course it sets the rules of trade between nations. Um, tar uh, sorry, countries set their base tariff rates through the WTO um, and uh, sign on to other agreements around trade like government procurement, for example. Uh, and trade disputes can be settled through the WTO as well. Um, most favored nation is something that you may have heard before. Uh, it really just means that a country cannot offer better trading terms to uh, one country and not another unless it has a free trade agreement that um, allows it to do so. And so free trade agreements really build on the commitments that uh, countries make through the WTO. 
Um, and a common way that a, that a member would do that is by offering preferential uh, tariff rates um, to another bilateral FDA partner. So um, what do those agreements do? Well, some free trade agreements are really kind of um, more just goods and tariff focused. Um, they focus on reducing tariffs. But uh, as time goes on, um, we've seen that FTAs are changing and they're really starting to cover many more areas of an economic relationship between countries. So whether that's small and medium-sized enterprise activity, uh, e-commerce, um, and uh, inclusive trade, um, they're really sort of growing. Um, in terms of inclusive trade, uh, some of the AFTAs, Canada's uh, in particular, have started to include provisions on things like gender, uh, indigenous peoples, and as I said, FMEs, uh, things like corporate social responsibility. Um, and so some of these more modernized FTAs really signal the importance of ensuring that those benefits and opportunities from free trade agreements are really widespread and available um, to uh, as many people as possible. Um, and um, to be sure, uh, inclusive trade is a priority for the, for the government of British Columbia. So this is, um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but this is a, a map showing Canada's free trade agreements and um, free trade talks. So uh, it is color coded. If it's blue, then uh, we've already got a uh, completed and implemented free trade agreement with that country. And uh, if it's sort of purplish, um, we've concluded negotiations, but not yet implemented the, the agreement. And if it's green, we're just in negotiations or exploratory talks with the country. And, um, so the good news here is if, if a business is looking to diversify and look for, looking for other markets, uh, Canada has been very busy on the free trade agreement front, and we now have um, 14 FTAs covering 51 countries. Um, as you can see on the map, uh, British Columbia in particular is, is well uh, positioned geographically to take advantage of that. Um, but I would note that, uh, of course, uh, you know, a lot of the goods coming from Canada, um, going to Korea, for example, are, are going to be coming through BC ports as well. And so uh, we've got that conduit to, to access Korea and uh, the Asia Pacific and, and, and abroad, uh, everywhere else. Um, the, the good news about this as well is that uh, these free trade agreements don't cancel each other out. And so, uh, you know, we, you, you may be aware that we have, uh, for example, a free trade agreement with Mexico through NAFTA and hopefully soon to be Canada, the US, Canada, US, Mexico agreement. Um, but we also have an agreement with Mexico through the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans Pacific Partnerships, CPTPP. And um, those agreements are not the same, uh, they differ in certain areas. And so the good news is a business can pick and choose which uh, provision of which agreements uh, better suits their needs. Uh, it might be a good time to just quickly talk about the role of the provincial government, uh, British Columbia, um, in trade talks. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, our branch's role is related to BC's interests as it relates to free trade agreements. And uh, as, as you know, a lot of people um, uh, are right in, in thinking that the federal government is sort of the lead on trade when it comes to trade agreements. They're the ones that enter into those agreements. Um, as they do that, though, the federal government will, uh, uh, it will consult provinces and territories. It will also discuss uh, interests with stakeholders, uh, industry or otherwise, as it uh, develops Canada's interests and priorities uh, in those negotiations. And so the pro province has a strong role to uh, make sure that its interests are known as Canada develops uh, its negotiated priorities. Um, and of course, as once those agreements come into play, we know that um, some of those provisions uh, apply to provinces as well, as well, and we need to be aware of those obligations. Um, provincial governments are also um, sort of responsible for ensuring that in some cases, their municipal governments are aware of some of those obligations as well. Um, now, with all of the talk about governments and free trade agreements, so it, it, it would be, um, uh, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking that, uh, you know, we're talking about governments doing the trading, but um, that's uh, usually not the case. It's businesses that are, that are trading. And that's why we're, we're doing what we're doing is try to, try to bridge the gap uh, between the signing and implementation of those agreements and the actual use of them by business. So let's jump now to the next slide and uh, get into the Canada 
Korea Free Trade Agreement. I know uh, I apologize for uh, how long that took, but thank you for your patience. Uh, we're now into the details of the CKFTA. Uh, this agreement entered into force on January 1st, 2015, and uh, this was Canada's uh, first FTA in the Asia-Pacific. Before that, BC and Canadian companies were sort of at a disadvantage uh, in, in Korea because uh, the EU and the US in particular already had trade deals there. And so this was an important deal for putting Canada uh, on a level playing field with many of their other, especially American and European competitors. Um, Korea has got a population of more than 50 million people. I think you've probably already heard of some of these uh, uh, statistics in your pre-brief uh, from in December if you're going on this mission. Um, a GDP of more than one and a half trillion US dollars. And um, it's a very large market with, uh, of course, a lot of opportunities. Um, to export BC Canadian goods and services. Um, growing middle class, and uh, I think Canadian goods uh, have a very good reputation in Korea um, for being high quality and, and clean and things like that and safe. And so these are all of great um, advantages for our products and services as well. Um, so Korea, of course, is also a gateway to a lot of uh, fast emerging markets in Asia. And when the CKFTA was being negotiated and implemented in, in BC and Canada as well, some studies were done uh, about what that potential impact might look like. And you can see a figure there of 32%. So there were some projections that uh, we would see some increases in our goods exports to South Korea. And uh, the good news is that we have seen some of that. We've seen some overall export growth as well as some growth in some key sectors. And so I think, uh, I can't speak for Canada, uh, the, the government of Canada, but um, you know, from the provincial government uh, of BC perspective, um, we think that that's great news and we would really like to continue to build on that. Um, before I move on to some of the nuts and bolts of the CKFTA, I'm going to put up another poll question for you. So the next question is, which of these was not a top 25 BC goods export to South Korea in Give you guys another minute. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's see how everyone did. Oh, so so uh, the, uh, the majority uh, thought that uh, it was coffee, and um, I really don't blame anyone for thinking that. Um, the answer, the correct answer, is actually salmon, and a few people uh, identified that correctly, which is um, which is good. Now, I I will a few notes on this question. I know it's seems like a bit of a trick question. Um, salmon, uh, we do know that uh, last year uh, our trade ministers were in Korea and they learned of a, um, of, a, of a promotion of BC salmon through the home shopping uh, network where it uh, actually did incredibly well. The sales were very quick and um, there was some strong interest in, in salmon from BC. So that's, that's great. Um, I think that uh, you know that we can hopefully um, 
you know, bank on that trend and continue to export uh, more salmon. It just didn't happen to show up in the top 25 exports for 2019, but maybe that will change uh, this year. Um, coffee is, a, of course, an interesting one. As you probably know, BC doesn't grow coffee, uh, but uh, what we do do is uh, roast it. Um, so that's where coffee shows up. And um, a little later, we'll talk about things like rules of origin and um, what qualifies as a originating product. Free trade agreements cover things like that. And um, the short, um, the short, uh, I guess, reason for why we can say that it was coffee from BC is basically that it was imported to BC from somewhere else, and then it was roasted and um, underwent significant enough production to be considered uh, eligible for that preferential treatment. So uh, as I said, we'll now move into some of the, the nuts and bolts and we'll focus on goods uh, to begin with and I'll talk a little bit about tariff elimination on this TTFTA. So it's of course, um, tariff elimination and reductions make your, your goods um, more uh, productive, sorry, more competitive. Um, it, uh, if someone told you that you, the, the, I guess the tariff of 100% on certain types of animal feed in Korea would be gone by this year uh, under the CKFTA, or that uh, shrimp and prawn would be 20% cheaper now, or your beer 30% cheaper by 2021. Um, those are very compelling reasons to consider uh, that market. Um, of course, that means that all of those products are that much cheaper than any competitors that don't have that preferential access. Uh, tariff reductions also reduce the cost of your imports into Canada. So you, you might find that uh, you can get a, 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 an input from Korea much cheaper um, and um, uh, use that uh, for processed food, for example, or maybe it's just a piece of, piece of machinery that you need to, to operate in your business. Um, as you can see on this table, overall, CTFTA uh, will eliminate, um, sorry, it has eliminated tariffs on 95% of Canadian goods as of this year. Um, but that number is going to jump all the way to 99.75% once the agreement is fully implemented by uh, 2032. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, but, you know, you know, 10 years from now, virtually everything coming out of Canada will enter ca uh, Korea tariff free. Uh, I've just thrown a few main uh, commodity uh, categories up there, forest products, metals and minerals, agriculture and agri-food. You can see that the, the, num the uh, level of tariff elimination is quite similar throughout there. Um, you know, there are, uh, I think if, if, if folks are interested, we can talk about some specific examples in a bit that might be more relevant to your business, but um, I've just pulled a few out. Uh, that might um, might be relevant. Uh, things like pulses, uh, tariffs uh, out of Korea were as high as 608%, um, and those will be eliminated by 2030. So that's a significant reduction, and um, uh, that's such a high tariff that, of course, that's not something that's likely to come, go down to zero quickly, and that's why um, it's being phased out instead. Um, fresh chilled and frozen beef cuts, um, tariffs and safeguard duties of 40% uh, will also be eliminated by 2030. Uh, things like soybeans have tariffs as, almost as high as 500%. Uh, those are going to be eliminated by 2024. Um, and most Canadian, as, I, as you can see on the, the uh, table here, most Canadian forest products are now duty free. And, I, and again, we can, we can go over some specifics um, in, a, in a bit. Now, the one thing I want to flag is the note at the bottom of this slide that says preferential treatment has to be claimed. And, um, it's really important that uh, people uh, are aware of who is actually bringing, in, bringing a good in. Bring, if you're working with somebody in Korea, for example, or somewhere else, um, the, the, whoever is importing that good and uh, is the importer of record needs to be aware that they need to claim that treatment in order to get those preferential rates. Uh, if, if customs uh, officials are not going to automatically uh, assume that your good is originating and that you need to get that preferential rate. So um, it's not always as simple as sticking the box, but um, if that, if, you know, that's something that we can also help, by, help you with if you want to make sure that you're getting that preferential treatment. So 
I'm just bringing up here on the screen something called uh, Canada's tariff finder, the forward, which Canada has a free trade agreement. So uh, you really only need to know whether you're exporting or importing, and then the country that you're interested in, and then your product. And um, your products can be searched by either keyword or by your HS code, if you know that uh, what that code is. And once you punch that in, it will probably ask you a couple of questions just to narrow down to make sure it knows exactly what product you're talking about. Um, if, uh, if somebody wants to right now, we can uh, pick an example. If you have a, a product that you're interested in, um, we, can try, um, we can try through the CKFTA to see what, uh, what the tariffs are like. And if you have a product that you're interested in, maybe you could just type it into the chat box right now. See if we have any volunteers. And if we don't have any volunteers, then I'll maybe I'll just pick a product. <clears throat> shampoo. Did somebody say something? Shampoo. Yeah, okay. So 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 we've got an example of shampoo. So we'll try that. So we're gonna find South Korea, we're gonna export shampoo. We'll we'll use a keyword and uh, hopefully it won't be too difficult to so, so this one is pretty straightforward. I went straight to the, the specific code, uh, which is, which is you can see is listed there. So uh, Chelsea is just going to click on confirm that code. And so if you just input that and then scroll down, uh, you can see a VTO. So that MFN rate of 5% is what uh, all countries would pay, uh, oh, sorry, all um, exporters would pay uh, if they didn't have a free trade agreement with Korea. And um, under the CKFTA, that rate is zero. So it's tariff-free under the CKFTA, and it has been tariff-free for a couple of years now. So there is uh, at least a 5% advantage over uh, any competitors that don't have that access. Uh, are there any other, uh, any other examples? Beef? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move on to beef. And before Chelsea does that, I'll just I'll just mention that um, there is a compare function within this uh, website. So if you're, for example, considering Korea, but you're also, say, considering Japan or some other markets, you can go back, you can add that uh, Korea tariff rate to the compare function and then go back and add another country or two and just see how they how they compare. So now we've got some, um, once uh, we put in beef, we've got some, some questions here. Uh, about the type of beef. So the person who volunteered beef, um, what, uh, what, what sort of beef are we uh, considering here? Fresh or chilled? Okay, we'll do fresh or chilled beef. And uh, bone in or boneless. So it, as you can see, it's very specific. And let's just use short ribs as an example. See what that... Uh, that, that brings up. Okay, so this one is this one is a, a little more uh, complicated, as you can see. So the MFN rate, the rate for all others, is 30%, quite high. Uh, under the CKFTA, that rate is lower. Uh, as of this year, 2020, that rate is 24%. So there is an advantage there. Now you will notice that there's some additional information in there about uh, weight. So uh, up to 21,000, um, I think, metric tons, metric tons is, uh, is a rate of 24%, but anything above that is 30%. So that's a tariff rate quota. So um, we, can, we can talk about that uh, later, or if you have questions about that, um, I'm certainly happy to answer that. Okay, so that's the Canada Tariff Finder. Um, so just a very brief introduction. If you are interested in what uh, sort of tariff rates your, your goods might be facing, um, I, I encourage you to, uh, to have a look at that. So let's move on to uh, some other advantages for goods uh, under the CTFTA. So um, in terms of goods, uh, non-tariff barriers are really the, the differing requirements and uh, standards, um, things like certification procedures and uh, labeling requirements and other regulations related to human, animal, and uh, uh, plant health. And these are important, of course, 
Uh, we want our governments to be able to, uh, to regulate um, for those reasons. But the problem is when you're starting to see overlap and duplication in some of these, um, some of these standards and certification procedures. So you need the same testing or very similar testing for your product in both Canada and Korea. That can really start to undermine some of the gains that you can have from, from things like tariff reduction. And so the good thing is that the CKFTA, just like most of our FTAs, contains some provisions to try to reduce these barriers. Um, there is a, a committee on sanitary and phytosanitary uh, measures. Um, the CTFDA really tries to make, uh, make sure that science and um, risk-based assessments are done um, instead of just, um, you know, resorting to regulators or political uh, decision-making to, to, um, uh, to implement things like certification and, and, um, and regulation. Uh, rules of origin, I just mentioned that uh, on the last slide. These can be very complicated and they might also be product specific. Uh, it's, it's really, the idea is really just uh, the FDA aims to spell out the way that uh, that product can, can gain that preferential treatment, as I said earlier. So if it's, if it's originating, if it's, if it's, you know, it's from the land or the sea, it's likely going to, you know, qualify automatically as, as originating from Canada. Uh, but where it gets a little trickier is when you have various inputs coming from other countries, countries outside of the free trade agreement area, so in this case outside of Canada or Korea, um, then it may become some sort of calculation or in any case there may be some consideration about whether or not it qualifies as originating. So this is, um, I'm very, I'm simplifying this very, quite a bit, but um, the good news is if there are any doubts about whether your product qualifies, uh, the, the, most of our free trade agreements contain provisions, including the CKFTA, that allow you to apply to the customs agency um, that is responsible for, for where your product would be coming in. So in this case, the Korea Customs Agency can provide something called an advanced ruling. And so that takes uh, some time. It can take one or two months, but um, and it may you have a small fee attached to it, but uh, it's gives you certainty that your product will qualify as originating. And, uh, and uh, once you get that decision, it's uh, binding. So you know and you have confidence that your product's not going to show up at the border and suddenly be uh, face tariffs that you didn't think you were going to face. Uh, transparency and predictability. Uh, the idea with our free trade agreements is that we have agreed upon rules and with dispute resolution to back those up. So we can really hold our trade partners accountable for the obligations that they've signed on to. And uh, the last thing I'll mention in terms of goods are exceptions. So countries do maintain some exceptions where the preferential treatment is not extended. Um, it's, it's important to sort of check to make sure that uh, your goods or your, your services as well are not included in those exceptions. Um, a common example is agricultural products. Uh, we, in many cases, you might see tariffs not being eliminated or, or um, maybe being phased out over a much longer period um, or just it, they simply aren't covered at all. And, um, you know, this is really just driven by countries that uh, aim to protect some of their domestic industry. Um, it's not, um, uh, so it's not unusual to see that and it's important to just make sure that it's not um, excluded. Uh, so these, uh, some of the things on the slide here are not just applicable for goods. We'll talk a little bit about them uh, with respect to services and investments as well in a few slides. <clears throat> okay, so that was goods, and um, let's talk a little bit about services. This is um, really it's sometimes harder for people to wrap their heads around uh, what a service would be would look like in a free trade agreement and how that might um, be considered. Um, of course, a service in this case is really anything that can't be dropped on your toe. Uh, BC, the good news is BC has access to secure and predictable market access for services in Korea now, and that includes the the Korea free uh, sorry the Korea procurement market. And that uh, is something I'll talk a little bit about in a couple of slides. Um, transparency and predictability, the same idea with, uh, that we just talked about with goods applies here. Um, uh, that, that Korea won't introduce 
any measures to limit the number of service suppliers, for example, uh, is, a, is a great thing. Uh, the CKSTA uses something called a negative list approach. And so this means that every service is covered uh, and under that free trade agreement unless it is specifically listed. Uh, and so this differs a little bit from some of our other agreements where we've taken a positive list approach. And um, in that case, uh, as you can imagine, it's, it, it um, tends to capture more services under the negative list approach. And so this is, um, this can also be problematic over time. So for example, with, with NASA, uh, you know, something that was being negotiated uh, back in, you know, in the early 90s, um, there were certain services that were, that started to emerge after, you know, a decade or more that simply weren't considered um, because they didn't really exist back when the agreement was first being negotiated. And so it can also, um, the negative list approach can also be um, helpful for making sure that those are captured as time goes on. Um, one big piece for services uh, that you can see here is, is something called facilitated business entry. And this is also known as temporary entry. It is really just the, the uh, just allows for certain categories of professionals and business people and, and traders and investors to enter into a market for a set period of time or up to a set period of time um, to go and service an investment, for example. Uh, it, it really allows you to go in and get a feel for, for the investment environment or just you know, talk to somebody who you're interested in dealing with. Um, what professionals are covered and the length of stay differs from agreement to, to agreement. Uh, in the case of the CKFTA, most of those provisions are very similar to NASA. And so there are some differences in terms of the categorization of some professionals. So uh, if you have questions about whether or not you would be eligible, please um, contact me and I can walk you through that. Um, it tends to be uh, anywhere from up to one to three years for that entry. Uh, the CKFTA specifically eliminates any need for a economic needs test. And the good thing about the CKFTA is that it was very ambitious. It provided, um, uh, PREA provided some access to Canada that it hadn't provided to any other, any other uh, of its trade partners up to that date. Uh, one last thing I'll mention about temporary entry on the CKFTA is that it also covers um, spouses of uh, those who are enter, seeking to enter that market on a temporary basis. And as I said um, uh, on the last slide, uh, there are some exceptions as well to be mindful of. So let's um, move on quickly to investment. Um, again, um, greater certainty, stability, and transparency is really the aim of the investment chapter of the CKFTA. Uh, minimum standard of treatment for how investors are being treated. So typically no uh, worse than their own investors. That's um, important for giving that, that investor confidence that they won't be treated unfairly. Um, there are also limitations on the number of uh, enterprises that may carry out a specific economic activity. Um, there are protections against discriminatory, discriminatory treatment. There are protections from things like expropriation without providing timely prompts and um, uh, adequate compensation. Uh, and just like the services provisions that we just talked about in the previous slide, this is also based on a negative list uh, approach. So hopefully that, in, that covers more um, than would ordinarily be covered. So let's quickly move on to government procurement. I'm just uh, looking at the time. I want to leave uh, some time for everyone to ask questions if they have. Um, this is, uh, uh, of course, uh, as you know, governments buy a, a lot of goods and services, and um, each of our free trade agreements differ in terms of what that uh, access looks like. Um, the general idea with the government procurement chapter is that, um, that uh, the procurement is transparent and partial and really accessible to all businesses. And so what this means for, for you and for various industries sort of differs depending on what, uh, what they're interested in, what sort of goods and services they have to offer. It's not always, not always relevant when it comes to government uh, procurement. Uh, the main thing that you need to keep in mind is coverage and thresholds. So in terms of the coverage, this is really just, um, well, two things. It's the types of goods and services that might be covered. 
uh, for one. Uh, the other is just the level of government that is covered by the, uh, by the agreement. So under the CTFTA, um, we're really just talking about um, uh, uh, the national and, and sort of made more major uh, arms of the government. And this differs a little bit from some of our other agreements um, that actually go down to a much more local level. So again, if, if you know, I've got some links up here on the screen, and um, uh, the second one in particular is more English focused and allows you to go in and search some of the opportunities that currently exist in the Korean government procurement market. Uh, the threshold is anything above 100 million won, which is um, you know, roughly $100,000, but not, not exactly. Um, so anything above that level, that's the threshold, uh, you would be eligible as a Canadian uh, goods or service supplier to bid on. And so if you go into that link uh, or one of those links, um, you can navigate some of those opportunities and uh, see if there's anything of interest there. Um, the, the one thing I'll notice or note, of course, is that um, these these obligations are reciprocal as well. So Korean bidders also have access to the Canadian market. And so, of course, it's great that we have opportunities um, to bid on uh, in, in Korea, but uh, we also should be mindful that uh, there may be um, increased competition that's coming in to bid on some of the opportunities available in the Canadian market as well. Uh, okay, so um, before we move off of government procurement, let's just do one last poll question. And uh, this is about uh, agricultural goods. Uh, which Canadian agricultural exports to South Korea uh, has experienced the most growth since the implementation of the CCFTA? <clears throat> okay, well, uh, we'll close this one off as well and see how everyone did. Okay, so um, uh, most said that uh, crude canola oil, um, followed by dog and cat food and pork and pork products. And um, the correct answer here is dog and cat food. And um, this, this actually grew from just over six million dollars in exports um, in 2014 to 21 more than 21 million dollars in 2018 so that was an increase of almost 250 percent and um, this is really just uh, there were there are tariffs of five percent on these types of products in korea and so that's that's uh that's a, that's a good help for for increasing those exports um, of course as you may know the, there is also a very big market for uh, dog and cat food, premium dog and cat food in Korea. Um, a lot of people have pets there and a lot of people want to keep them fed. So um, some good opportunities there. So let's move on now to the last slide. This is just a resources slide. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. Okay. So this uh, is a mixture of online resources and just some of our offices. Uh, as I said at the, you know, at the beginning, we're, we're here to help. Uh, our branch and our international trade division is here to help. We've also got uh, great connections with the federal government. And um, if there's something that we can't help you with, uh, we can certainly advocate with them that um, an issue be raised. Um, we've got the Canada Tariff Finder link there at the beginning, as well as a website where you can go and report a trade barrier. If you do encounter a trade barrier, please register it there, um, but we'd also be happy to hear about it. Um, BC's Export Navigator is listed here. If you are based in BC, this is 
really just community-based advisors that um, provide free support uh, and ongoing guidance to uh, help your business grow outside of British Columbia. Uh, we've also got a link here for signing up for um, uh, sanitary and, and technical uh, notifications. So this is things that countries are implementing or considering implementing that you may want to be aware of. So for example, a country may be uh, bringing in a new labeling requirement or something like that. Uh, and then we've got uh, my and my director's contact information is there as well as uh, the executive director with the Trade Readiness and Services branch uh, also within our ministry. And uh, the last two links there are, one is the trade and investment representative. So BC has a network of trade and investment reps uh, around the world um, who are really just there to promote BC as, uh, you know, as a, a destination for investment, um, as a good partner for trade and innovation, and a source, of course, for good quality services and goods. And um, the last link is Canada's Trade Commissioner Service, which uh, um, you know, is really more of a national um, Similar idea, but uh, at a national level. Um, so those are our resources, and uh, I appreciate you listening in today to hear about uh, information on the CTFTA. It's um, a lot of information, I know, a lot of technical information to to sort of condense down into a short uh, presentation. So if uh, if there are any questions that uh, come up, um, if you have any questions right now, um, I can I can answer them. Otherwise, I will. Uh, uh, switch over to uh, hear from the Asia Pacific Foundation of Canada. So if you have any questions, please just type them in. Okay. All right. Well, I guess uh, there are no questions. If if uh, if any come up, please uh, go ahead and text them in before we before we finish off today. Uh, uh, or please just uh, send me an email and I'd be happy to chat. And um, right now we're going to unmute, I believe, Christine and maybe AW as well from um, the Asia Pacific Foundation. So uh, Jessica, if you're there, we would um, like to unmute. Um, Hello, can you hear me? This is Christine Nakamura. Hi, Christine. Hi, Ben. First of all, thank you so much for all the work you did, and it was a very good presentation. Um, I think that uh, for, in terms of the women that are going on our mission, um, I'm sure they learned a lot from this, because I certainly learned a lot, and I'm a former Foreign Service officer. So <laughs> anyway. Um, great, great. Just to give an update on our mission, um, AW is online, I think, as well. Are you AW? Uh, Jessica, if you, if you can also unmute AW if he's still there. Sorry, it's looking like he's just gone offline at the moment. He's showing up. Okay, offline. all right. In any event, um, uh, unfortunately, due to the uh, emerging health concerns in the Asia-Pacific region, We've had to, um, unfortunately, delay and postpone our uh, mission to South Korea, but we have every intention to uh, go forward with that mission as soon as um, we hit the peak and it starts to, you know, abate, the situation abates. We have a wonderful delegation, a very strong delegation of women entrepreneurs, and I think that um, the sectors that we're uh, focusing on um, that are represented by our delegation are um, the healthcare, health and uh, wellness uh, sector, education sector, and some agri-food um, mm -hmm. that pertain to um, wellness. So um, I think that this was extremely helpful, and um, I'm sure that down the road, because we'll have a few months to... Uh, uh, longer to prepare for the mission that uh, should questions come up from our delegation um, I'd like to I'd encourage them to contact you and we may do that directly from the Asia Pacific Foundation as well so again Ben um, thank you so much for taking the time and um, in essence uh, given that there were no questions today I'm sure that questions will um, arise over the next couple of months as we prepare finalize our, our preparations uh, for our mission to uh, South Korea. So thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for, for that. And thank you for uh, organizing the mission. 
and um, we um, we are here for sure to answer any questions that might come up. And um, again, I just want to emphasize it's not only questions on the CTFTA or free trade agreements. We, we are uh, we're here to walk through any sort of trade barriers that people may be encountering in markets that um, not necessarily we don't have that we don't necessarily have a, a free trade agreement with as well. Um, so yeah, thank thank you, Christine, for for yeah. For one other today. thing. One other thing I'd like to emphasize, being a former Foreign Service officer, and I've, I served in Korea for four years as well um, as head of the political economic section, um, wow. I'd like to emphasize that um, BC and um, Alberta and Ontario and the um, province of Quebec, you all have representatives on the ground with whom we work very closely. All of them are on site to help us with the mission as well in Korea, and we will do that for our subsequent missions. Um, in total, we will be doing four missions to Asia, with uh, Korea being the first one because of the bilateral FTA. That's great. That's, that's uh, so good to hear. And yeah. um, we, uh, we wish you luck, you and the attendees luck with those missions. And um, yes, we're, we're, we're here for, for any, any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a, a few delegates from BC, so I'm sure they're online today, but uh, certainly uh, this uh, presentation was helpful for everybody across the nation, and we have a very diverse group going from coast to coast, so thank you very much once again, Ben. Okay, thank you, Christine. Um, and uh, before we sign off, I'll just mention that uh, we, we have uh, recorded the session and we'll make this available. Uh, we can distribute uh, a link of, for this to the attendees. And uh, also, I believe you can access the presentation itself in PDF format. Um, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you should be able to click that and, and actually download it. And if that doesn't work, then, um, then we're happy to distribute that to, to people as well. Ben, um, could we, if there is a way of uh, us distributing this to the rest of the delegates who are unable to join us today, I think it would be very helpful for them as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I will, uh, I will send you, Christine, a mm -hmm. link to the uh, recorded session as well as the presentation itself. Wonderful. Please copy <laughs> AW on it because will do. our program manager, he's done tons of work on this. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I thank you and thanks to AW as well. And um, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, talk to you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.